Welcome back to Free Energy Functions in Physical Chemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about the equilibrium constant and ultimately how we get uh, something called pKa and Ka out of that. All right. And in the next video, we're going to talk about how we derive the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. All right. So ultimately we can have um, some kind of equilibrium reaction okay in this case what i'm going to do is i'm going to have this molecule which is acetic acid it's an organic acid and i'm going to throw it in with some water and it's going to be in equilibrium with the conjugate base acetate and then the conjugate acid of water hydronium all right so one thing to notice here is that acetic acid notice is losing a proton to water okay that's this proton right here so that means acetic acid notice is the conjugate acid, this is the conjugate acid of uh, acetate, acetate would therefore be the conjugate base of acetic acid, and then water, if this was being converted into hydronium, water would be the conjugate base because it's, it's, it's gaining a proton, and therefore hydronium would be the conjugate acid of water. Usually when you have these sort of organic type of uh, acid-base reactions, you have a conjugate acid that gets converted into a conjugate base. We'll call it conjugate acid 1 to conjugate base 1. And then you're going to have, in the same direction, a conjugate base 2 being converted into conjugate acid 2. All right, Because the proton has to go somewhere. Protons going from acetic acid to water, and that generates acetate and hydronium. Now, because this is an acid-base reaction, okay, and it's an equilibrium, we normally use the, the symbol KEQ to define an equilibrium constant, but because it's an acid-base reaction, what we're actually going to do is call the equilibrium constant KA, and the A here is for acid. Okay, it's an acid equilibrium reaction. Okay, and it, it usually these acid equilibrium reactions favor the reverse reaction. Okay, at least as if it's written right th like this. So you can say it's going to be overall have a positive delta G. All right. Let me show you kind of a good way to write concentrations. And um, this is what I'll do in, the, in all of these videos that we do that deal with concentration. So you always put the concentration in brackets. Okay. And you indicate what species you're talking about. So maybe I'm just talking about the concentration of water. Okay, actually, let me not use water because that is not included in the expression. Let me actually use a different species. Let's say something like ethanol. Okay, concentration of ethanol. Okay, and sometimes you can have the concentration when you're at equilibrium or when you're not at equilibrium. So a lot of times when I, when I want to indicate that this is the concentration at equilibrium, a little subscript I'll put right here is EQ. And that's going to denote that I'm at equilibrium. So this type of um, concentration at equilibrium would be involved in the equilibrium constant expression, so KEQ. We're going to deal with Ka in this video. If I ever indicate a concentration, I'll do the same thing for ethanol, but I don't indicate this EQ here, you assume it's not at equilibrium, in which, in which case the expression it would be involved in is the reaction quotient. So the idea is this is at equilibrium, the reaction quotient is not not at equilibrium. All right, very different. But here we're only going to be dealing with the equilibrium constant. So how do I express it? Well, ultimately, right, I'm going to have A moles of acetic acid. It's actually going to be 1. B moles of water goes to C moles of acetate, which goes to D moles of hydronium, right? Well, water is never included in the equilibrium expression, so what I do is I take the product of the products divided by the products of the reactants minus water, because that's not included. So this is, and since all of these little A, B, C, Ds are one, because everything's one to one to one to one, then this is just gonna be concentration of C, which is gonna ultimately be acetate at equilibrium, times the concentration of hydronium at equilibrium, divided by the concentration of acetic acid at equilibrium. Now, for, because this is an acid-base reaction, I'm going to, instead of calling this KEQ, I'm going to give it a special name, which is just KA. And KA just refers to any equilibrium constant for an acid-base reaction that is not one way. Okay? Something like H HCl dissociation is considered one way. That doesn't have a, a good KA. All right. So here, the, the species C is acetate, so I put that here. It's at equilibrium. D is hydronium. 
that's at equilibrium, and the A in the denominator is acetic acid. All right, so what I'm going to do ultimately is I'm going to focus on, in the next video, I'm going to ultimately derive what's referred to as the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Okay, but to do that, I want to go over one very important thing, and that's how to derive it, but ultimately we have to know something first. And this is probably something that you more or less learned in general chemistry, maybe even um, biology, some one of those courses or something. So let's suppose now um, I have this this, this um, letter P right here, and then I put something here. I don't care what it is. Something could be anything. Um, in some cases, you can say, say PCL. Okay. In some cases, you can put POH. Right. You've even seen PH. Right. What is this P right here? Because there's actually a kind of a formal definition of what the P is. All right. P is an operator. Okay. What is an operator? An operator is something that operates on a variable. Okay, and it take it does a function on the variable, performs some function. Anytime you see this lowercase p and then some variable, as in p times the concentration of H plus, where H plus is the variable, what it's doing is p is essentially a shorthand way of writing negative log base 10 of the variable. Okay, so this is, of course, equal to negative log base 10 of whatever's after the p, so concentration of H plus, right? In other words, what we're saying is that P right here is equivalent to negative log base 10. Okay, it's just you're t using some function on the variable. In other words, P is the operator. In other words, if I wanted to take P of X, or PX, the P here is negative log base 10, so it's just negative log of X, negative log base 10 of X. I could even do something like this. I could take P dy dt. Okay, you, there's, not, there's not really any use for it, but it's negative log of dy dt. pH, or p, times con, p of the concentration of H, is negative log of the concentration of H, where sometimes they just write it as pH. p of Ka is the negative log of Ka, or pKa. Okay? The two identities here that we're going to use in derivation of the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation are going to be pH or P and pKa. So it's important to know what this P is because we're going to end up taking the negative log of, of, of ultimately both sides of one of these equations that I previously had written, and the negative log is another way of just writing P. And so we're going to take the negative log and we're just going to write in P for it, and then we're ultimately used, going to use that to derive the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, and that's what we're going to do in the next video. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of intuition on what Ka is. In the next video, we'll actually derive the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, and then in the video after that, we'll show you how it's applicable and how to use it to make buffers. See you in the next video.